Martin Garrix recently released his first ever album called Sentio, and the song that really stood out to me in terms of production and emotion was If Will Ever Be Remembered featuring Sean Ferrugia. So let's go over the production elements that make this song so memorable. Now, at first glance, you may think this song is fairly typical in terms of arrangement, with a verse, a build-up or pre-chorus, if you will, followed by a drop, and then repeating these sections. But there are two small things in the song's arrangement that Martin Garrix did really intelligently, which I'd like to highlight. First, after 15 bars in the verse, Martin drops the following brief moment of silence or rest. Now, this allows us listeners to subconsciously digest what we've heard so far and also helps our brain prepare for the new information that is about to be introduced in the next 16 bars, like strings and an electric guitar. But what's noteworthy here, which is the second point I want to highlight, is that Martin actually concludes these next 16 bars with a similar but longer moment of rest, where we're only left with the following beautiful strings. Now, again, this helps us prepare for what's about to come, but this silent string part also makes for a really cool dynamic, as we basically go from a whole bunch of instruments and elements to only strings, which adds this great element of surprise, and that's what keeps this song interesting to us as listeners, making this a really effective arrangement trick. Now, the element that lies at the core of this arrangement is an acoustic guitar. And while I'm pretty sure Martin uses a real guitar in the original, I sadly don't know how to play the guitar myself, meaning I had to resort to my digital toolbox. So to create this virtual guitar sound, I'm using two layers that are later complemented by a third layer. The first is the Wish You Were Here preset in the Ample Guitar M plugin, where I increase the stroke volume to get this nice strum or stroke sound. But I felt the sound alone was a bit empty and thin, which is why I added an instance of context from the acoustic. We noticed though that our guitar sound still lacks some body and warmth, which is why I added this plugin called R Bass to the strummed acoustic layer, and this magically adds a bunch of warmth and body. Then, along with this third guitar layer, which also comes from the strummed acoustic library, I'm routing the guitars to a guitar bus, where I'm able to uniformly make our guitars sound brighter, fatter, and wider across the stereo spectrum. However, we're obviously going to be needing more elements than just an acoustic guitar, which is why we're also using the following layers. A piano playing the same chords as the acoustic guitar for more body, A bass guitar playing the chord's root notes to fill up the low end of the available frequency spectrum. A filtered electric guitar with a great amount of reverb playing the notes F and A sharp to create a dreamy atmosphere. A string orchestra playing the exact same notes to support this electric guitar. Another string orchestra playing the chords for extra emotion. And finally this cello by Tina Guo, who actually does a lot of the cello work in Hans Zimmer's soundtracks. So for these Tina Guo strings, please note how I'm automating the expression, which first ensures that our strings get louder and more expressive, and second makes sure that our strings sound quieter and more intimate during this 4 bar silent or rest section I talked about before. And we're doing this to make our strings sound more realistic, as Martin Garrix actually has all of his string sections recorded live by this Dutch violinist called Frank van Essen, who typically records several first violins, second violins and violas, and then he layers these with orchestra samples to resemble the sound of a full orchestra. And then we arrive at the section where the lead is introduced, which is where I wanted this same Tina Guo cello to also play the lead melody. But then I ran into a problem. 
the cello only goes as high as this D over here. So that's why I moved down the melody by one octave, exported it to audio, and then I simply pitch shifted it up by one octave to obtain the following sound. Now, this sounds kind of weird, because obviously this pitch shift isn't natural, but once we layer it with some more strings and our synth layers, we notice that it melts with the other elements quite well. So, what do these other lead elements consist of? Well, we have this violin playing the exact same melody with the accented articulation, which offers a little more attack and spice than the typical legato articulation. Further, we have this marcato string sound from the Sonus Core Orchestra library to add some more body. And then we're complementing these strings with a bunch of synths, and I've actually covered them in detail in a previous tutorial where I explain how to produce the drop and if will ever be remembered, which I highly encourage you to check out if you want to learn more about the production and the mixing details of this drop. Please note, however, that I created that tutorial back when the original song wasn't released yet, which is why this video covers a few elements that the previous tutorial doesn't include, such as the string layers I just discussed and these LFO automation clips for lead 1 and lead 2. So what does this LFO, or low frequency oscillator, do? Well, an LFO practically allows us to add a rhythmic pulse or sweep, so basically movement, to a synth. So let me illustrate this on the first lead synth, and let me first play you this lead with and without the LFO effect. Now, in this case, I'd say the LFO effect sounds closest to a vibrato effect, like something you'd hear on real strings. And importantly, in this LFO tab inside Silent 1, we can determine which element of our synth we'd like to modulate, in this case the sound's pitch, how fast we want the rhythm of this modulation to be, how much of the effect we want to hear, and how high we want the vibrato effect to go in terms of pitch. So that's how I created this vibrato-like LFO, and then I automated the gain knob to make sure that the intensity of the vibrato varies while playing the lead, as it would if a violinist played the violin. Now, as said, the other elements in the lead section and drop, like sound design, drums and mixing, are already explained in detail in my other Martin Garrix tutorial that I've linked below, meaning there's only a couple of things left to discuss in this video, like the drums and effects in the verse. So let me just play them for you real quick. What I still want to highlight though is two transition effects that I created myself and I think it may be helpful to show you how these are made. So first we have the following electric guitar transition. And what I did is, I took the electric guitar ambience pattern that I talked about before, I turned the F into a D, then I exported the pattern including effects like reverb, delay, etc. I reversed it, and then I routed this audio clip to a new mixer channel where I added a Lopez filter, a reverb, a delay, and a filter automation to obtain this transition that really just makes for some nice ear candy with the goal of keeping the listener interested. And then the other transition effect I wanted to highlight is this one introducing the lead. So how do we create this? Well, we simply add a reverb to our first lead with a pretty long decay. And then we insert an instance of Edison, which allows us to record our lead. So when we hit record, we play an A sharp, which is the first note of our lead melody. We simply let the reverb fade away, and we stop recording. Then we choose send to playlist as audio clip, open the clip we just created, and choose reverse. And there we go. We got a self-made reverse sweep that helps us introduce the lead really nicely, which becomes evident as we listen to the transition into the lead section with and without this reverse sweep. Music 
And with that said, I'd like to wrap up this production breakdown. So if you've made it this far in the video and you're still hungry to learn, I definitely recommend you to download the free FLP down below, study it at your own pace and shoot me any questions you might have in the comments below. Also, if you learned something new or simply enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this in the future but haven't subscribed yet, make sure to click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Say, everybody has a legacy, we just don't know it. Everybody has their own legacy. Everybody, yeah. I'm sure that every one of us touched someone's heart. Some do it a lot, some do it a bit, but at least everybody has this one person in their life where yeah. they mean something. Yeah, yeah. And they've done something. Sacrifice.